so anyway, what I wanted to do is to let you know, apparently Kevin cannot make it. He's, uh, if you look under the participants, <clears throat> uh, I'm Kevin Raber, AKA Jeff Shiwi. Um, Kevin can't be here because he's in the Faroe Islands. And I'm gonna go ahead and start sharing my screen. So I think you guys can all see that opening. So welcome, welcome, welcome to the Photo PXL Photo Chats, conversations for photographers by photographers. And today's guest is Holger, Holger Miski. And um, he's, uh, uh, we were first introduced to him uh, through John Cornicello's uh, original version of the Photo Chats. And Holger is one of the guys that kind of re-invested in, uh, all of us back into the photo chats. Um, he twisted our arms and got us yeah. going again. Yeah. <laughs> um, next week, or two weeks from now on May 22nd, we're going to have Rad Drew, which is a friend of Kevin's. And we know each other, but never have actually met in real life, IRL. Uh, so it'll be interesting to to have uh, uh, Rad. Um, and then June 5th is Hugh Brownstone. I don't know him. June 19th is Alan Ross, which I'll be very interested in because Alan was a former um, uh, um, uh, assistant to Ansel Adams. And it'll, I'm pretty sure that the 15th, uh, I, in fact, I wish I could be there, the 15th is going to be the release of the Ansel Adams stamps. Yeah, it's next um, week. Yeah, which I've already ordered, but they've got a big reunion thing uh, happening at the Ansel Adams studio in Yosemite. Um, and I could have gone to it if I if I wasn't in Portugal. Uh, so today I am a host. Kevin is not here. John Cornicello, John, wave, wave so everybody can see you. Uh, he's the original um, uh, instigator for the photo chats. He he felt isolated during the pandemic, and he was doing these things two two times a week, which um, was actually very interesting because it was some place to go that you could talk to somebody and and talk about photography. Um, Kevin's got some other workshops: Palouse, Greenland, Fine Art Printing. Um, I'm not going to be there for the May because he changed it from the beginning of May to the end of May. And I'm taking a workshop with Sam Abel. I'll get to see John in person again. Uh, a few rules, everybody. I want everybody to be muted uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, while Holger is speaking, I don't want ancillary noise to steal the um, um, uh, speaker screen. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so Holga, forget about it. And and <laughs> I don't I don't know if he knows what that forget about it is all about. But um, he's not part of the mafia. He is a, a German that speaks English quite well. He lives near the Dutch border on in Western Germany, uh, and has turned into arguably a pretty darn good photographer, um, which is is not shocking, but it's encouraging <laughs> because I've seen kind of a growth in his uh, um, involvement in photography. So I'm going to stop sharing. Still recording. Oh, sorry. I am going to switch to, yeah, Holgar, you've got it. I think so. Yeah. Let's see, you should all see this. Oh, this bar would just disappear right now. Yeah, you're good. Just hit play. Yeah, it's just the. I have this bar on top there that's covering the play button. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where did, doesn't it say play at some point here? There's. Just above you. Above Keep me? going. There, you just passed the play button. Keep going right there. 
Oh, there it is. Why can't I hit that? I got this stupid so space barrier. Bar doing? It's always something, isn't it? Can you hit the space bar? Oh, wait, it says play slideshow. That's good. There that we go. Work. There You're we good. go. <laughs> With always something. So, uh, yeah, good evening, everybody, or good morning, or I don't know where you are right now. So, um, yeah, as he said, <clears throat> not quite correctly, my name is Holger Mischke. And uh, I'm from, like as just said, from Germany. And I was introduced to, I think it was in August 22, what is that, uh, to to uh, John's show. And I actually was on it four times now, I think, with some uh, some other discussions. And at some point, I interviewed uh, uh, John for the, for the show. And this forget about it thing is, uh, I recently... Rewatched Donnie Brasco with uh, that's a movie with uh, Al Pacino and uh, Johnny Depp, and there was a scene where uh, this FBI technician asks uh, Johnny Depp or Donnie Brasco for that matter what forget about it is, and then he explains in more words than I, I don't want to read the whole scene, but he says it's something you, uh, that can mean that you agree with somebody, uh, that you disagree that you uh, think, think something is the, the greatest thing in the world, or uh, you also, um, but it's also like saying go to hell. And sometimes it just means forget about it. And I thought that's that's a quite good picture for when it comes to photography, because I think given some uh, parameters and some context, uh, any photograph can mean anything. Everything can mean anything, really. It depends on how you interpret it, uh, what what your your um, your development is. What what like like Ansel Adams said something had a quote where, about the lines of uh, that you don't bring to uh, making a photograph just a camera, but you bring to the act of photography all the pictures you've seen, the books you've read, the music you've heard, and the people you loved. And I think that's, uh, well, my shrink says I think too much, but that's some of the thoughts that come into play when it comes to to my uh, photography then. And uh, here, let's, uh, the first one is, and I, I name all of them. It's never just like three with whatever, three with apples or something. It always is something uh, that comes to me either at point of capture or when I'm uh, going home after that, or when I sit at the computer and do something with it. Before it gets printed, because they all get printed, uh, I come up with at least a title and sometimes uh, even a couple of sentences, which doesn't mean that I explain anything. That would be the worst that you can do with trying to explain what you do, because either it stands for itself or it's not good enough, I guess. But uh, to me, it is that I had an emotional response to something, and that's why I took a picture of it. And uh, then I offered you something that explains my uh, emotions towards this photograph as an invitation to do the same and to find your story for this picture. So this one is called Deprivation, and that's, um, I, I like to, to walk around beaches just looking down. I can do this for hours, because there's always like little landscapes in there. <clears throat> And sometimes I walk out into the water with the camera, which was, uh, it's always kind of kind of scary because you think it's, you're only one, one uh, slippy stone away from losing your camera, but this one worked out pretty good. That was the Netherlands and it's called in my spot. I thought there was so much going on in this, uh, in the water there, especially with the two uh, seagulls fighting for that spot up there. And this, when when the 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 sky has this 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 two dimensional gray and there's not really anything in it, then I go either this way to to very uh, high key or I go the other end and uh, there's gonna be something like that later on that I go to some low key stuff. Uh, so I'll make up for this with uh, with the elements here with the the buoys and the seagulls. Again, the Netherlands. Netherlands not too far away. I only drive like three hours and I'm at the shore. That is, um, that was actually, there's no filter involved in this. This is Normandy, and there was the night we, we came uh, to the shore. On, on that side, the, 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 um, the sky was really that dark. There was like a storm rolling in or something. 
and these white cliffs, they are like they have on the other side of the channel in England also. And then when he turned around, the sky was like this. So it was really coming from, uh, it was rolling down the coast. And I really like these, these, uh, this, this old steel thingy there. <clears throat> and it's, it's usually not, I'm, I'm not restricting myself to, to landscape or uh, whatever. It is whatever catches my eye and whatever I think uh, excites me, then I wouldn't limit myself and say, no, this is not my genre. I'm not taking a picture of that. That would be stupid, I guess. Um, this is called Find Me. And I just like these. I, I live now, it's it's getting to to be that kind of age. I'm like 56 now and I, I moved to the to the outskirts. Not, not suburbia really, it's more like a country thing here. There were lots of fields and that, and I just like these lines and the uh, the patterns in the in, in in nature around here. And I can have this every day. I walk with my dog out here. This is a bit older. Uh, this is called LOD, and I just that that again is uh, in 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 uh, in the Netherlands on the coast, and just the the way these these uh, beach houses looked and and the shapes and the, the marron grass up there, there's a lot of texture and and uh, tonalities in there. And it's, I, I can see that it's different, like what uh, Jeff said, there's <laughs> hopefully some kind of uh, evolution there. The way I, I process back then is, is a bit different from what I do now. And again, the Netherlands, <laughs> it's uh, called Lost Post. And sometimes I, I don't have uh, a film camera that's, for me, it didn't work that way around. I started digital, it had to be digital to to kind of interest me. And now I got a, a film camera from the thirties and I'm looking forward to try something with that by it. But I couldn't be bothered with the dark room back then. So then, uh, I, I when 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 I have a square format, that doesn't mean I do middle uh, medium format. It's just what I cropped it to. And there was, like I said, is it's not uh, it's not limiting myself to anything. It's just something I see, and sometimes I don't even know why it is what attracts me. But that's something that comes later, maybe because I think. We should always we be aware of, of what we're doing and who we are, because it's all connected the 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 uh, your experience as a as a as a human being and the experience as being a photographer or artist or whatever you want to call yourself. But the the thing is really the key is I guess to to uh, to let keep the 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 development of yourself going is to realize where you stand and have uh, that point to go on and find out about the direction you're going in. Because if you don't have a direction, this is going to be really hard to go anywhere. That's something I also thought, is is there anything in there? It was when we were, were moving into our house that we have out here and, and it wasn't it wasn't ready and we still had a lot to do, but we set up our, our uh, bed up there in this room. And I woke up one morning, turned around and saw this and uh, yeah, it was a picture to me. And it's, I think that that's another one of these thoughts that I had is that I think uh, there are some objects, but I think the real uh, stories for me are the real emotions I, I look for is more in the parts of the, of the image that is dark, that is out of focus. It's like something that Miles Davis said when he said, uh, it's not only in the notes you play, it's in the notes you don't play. So I'm looking for something in these in this void that you can fill with meaning. Sometimes it looks really, uh, really old school. Uh, even though it's 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 uh, digital, I have to admit I'm a, I'm a big fan of Alfred Stieglitz, not only of uh, the pictures but all the, also the the philosophy, uh, the writings that he made is is really amazing. That one, yeah. The, <laughs> That one was called. He was just here, and the the thing about it is, it's 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 a, a tree that I always liked uh, here. It's only like I don't know, like half a mile away or something. And I took this po a picture, named it. Uh, he was just here, and a week later they chopped the thing off. So uh, it's it's not like I have a I, I don't have a third eye or something, but it was it was kind of hmm, 
why did I uh, name it like that? And then this happens. This is, uh, I call that turning point because on the right side, like down this, down this uh, little road there, there's a farm and every morning the, the, uh, the, the old grandfather of the family walked down this, this road to the, uh, to, the, to the next road and he couldn't make it back. He couldn't make the whole trip in one go. So they, they placed this chair there for him to, to sit down for a second and, and relax before he went back to the house. And I took that picture uh, the day he died. And after that, the, the, uh, the, the, the chair disappeared. And sometimes I guess this, this was taken in, 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 uh, in Greece when I was working as a bike guide and a hike guide. And sometimes I just take pictures because it's just beautiful. It doesn't have to have uh, some kind of hidden meaning or message. Or a lot of people say like I'm I'm trying to to tell stories with my images, which I think they you can't do. I don't think that images tell stories, but that's that's an opinion. I think everybody should have their own opinion as long they have as they have an opinion. If they that they know why they are doing this and why they're calling it this. Uh, it's better than just, just, I think that a lot of people like the storyteller thing. That was a term that came up and a lot of people like to use it and never really thought about, am I really doing that, that I can tell myself that I have a big problem with calling myself an artist because I don't like the word at all. It doesn't say anything to me. This is, uh, I think I can, I can really say when I, when I took that, uh, it's called My Word is Light, and it was like a sunrise, and I liked just how the, uh, how the, how the light played on this, this white wall there. It's, it's a church wall, obviously. And that is, uh, we, we found a, a village in southern France uh, at the end of a road, so you wouldn't pass it. it you, you would have to know that this village is there. And they had a, a something they called the philosopher's path. So along this this path, there's always uh, this little signs uh, with with text from from some uh, writers of philosophers. I think it started with Whitman actually, but they were all translated to French, so I couldn't I couldn't really read it. But I thought the idea was really neat, <laughs> and it was really great light. It's 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 a small uh, it's like a canyon there. And it was actually the 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 story and of this this uh, this village was quite interesting because they had it was a big thing for the for the resistance in the in the Second World War they were hiding there and there's still a monument and they look kind of strange at us for our German uh, uh, license plates and stuff but well what can you do? It's the same village and they had a, a 14th century um, church there and it was. Uh, because they only like 24 people live there. And uh, so I had this this one afternoon all for myself, this this church, and I was just, I was sitting in there, I was I was thinking and I was taking a couple of shots on this one I really liked with the light from the outside in, in this actually really cold uh, church room there. And that's one, one of the, I didn't want to show all of these, but sometimes I write a couple of lines, uh, like I said, uh, for these these pictures and this one, I don't know if anyone has a small monitor. I gotta read this. It was June when I came up those stairs. The shadows were getting longer, but the sun had not left the valley, and still it seemed darkness and cold followed me, breathing down my neck. And I thought, for the love of God, don't op don't you open the door. Again, another shot from this. Uh, from this uh, church. It's strange to be in a room that's so old, really. And that was my my room in, in, in this, this village. Uh, it's just everything seemed so, so, so timeless, which I really like in, in a picture. That's called uh, Looking East and the the, the birds and the, the posts there, they're not cloned. If you look at that for a second, you see there's some differences. And uh, again, because there was nothing in the sky, it's, it's treated to have an, a like painterly effect, which you can see in the, in the waves there. And this one also had a text, 
says, looking east for anything, for hope in the rising sun, for something that matters, though nothing ever really does, for a reason to stay without feeling held back, and all the time you were approaching from the west. This was a set of images. I had, at some point in my life, I had to, to work factories. Uh, now I now I take care of, of uh, well, half of the days I'm taking care of uh, mentally handicapped people. But there were days when I was working in steel mills and other kind of factories. And it always gave me this feeling of, of well, a couple of feelings, actually. And then this series, this one I called uh, 12.30 p.m. stuck. And it's, uh, I, I just hated it. I couldn't imagine to do something like that for 40 years or to the end of my life because my father did something like that. I guess that comes into play. That again, that's a defunct steel mill and uh, that's a perfect place to to make pictures that, that uh, 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 convey that kind of feeling. This will be called 6 a.m. empty. And there you have 4.30 p.m. caged in. And this is a, um, a phone booth in on the island of Mallorca in Spain, which I called No Change. Uh, I've been in on that island quite often to, to work there uh, in, in, in spring before the season started. And it's 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 known for parties and that, but uh, actually this the part of 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 the island where I was uh, was a lot different than that, and there was more much more to the island than than just having parties and stuff. And this one, it's 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 so old. It's I think that must have been like the first couple of months that I had my first DSLR because I've only been doing this for ten years, and. For the love of God, I can't remember how that happened. It, it's uh, we went across the border to uh, to the Netherlands and uh, just to the next bigger town, and we turned around the corner and I saw this this painting on the on the wall there, and I I think I also saw the the, the kid, but I it's not time that this the ball is like like it's it's also painted on the wall, but the ball is actually the ball he's playing with, and I had the absolute sheer luck to to hit that at that moment when the, the ball was actually touching the wall and bouncing back to him to uh, kick it again. And uh, I was in, in Greece quite some time. Uh, I was um, island hopping on the, uh, the, the, the Greeks uh, islands in the Mediterranean. Uh, for this company, and uh, this is just some guy who was uh, working on his field, and you have all the seagulls like exploding because he sees uh, he's. I, I guess the the insects come out when he's 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 riding over that field or something. <clears throat> That's again friends, and I always like that. It's called near or far. Because when you only look at the upper half, it it seems like the the pole is actually a a, a tower somewhere the same size as these, this lighthouse. And then you look down and it actually moves up front and you see, oh no, it's a pole. It was, uh, yeah, and, and in real life, it was even worse. <laughs> and this, I, I, I like to, to see um, man-made elements and, and nature in the same picture. And then to see like, the 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 background, the the obviously the, 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 the clouds that could be, from, from the design, it looks like marble. It could be anything. It could be water or whatever. It's all this ge geometry that we can do and, and nature does just looks like that. And all we can do is something like this pole and the, and the wires and that that's quite angular and, and not that interesting. And that's again, the coast of, of the Netherlands. And uh, it, it I, I found it interesting that just a bench like that and a light post can convey the feeling of, of loneliness, at least for me in that moment. And that is, uh, I, I found that interesting because it was an, an, an example for, I was just trying, I wouldn't know how to recreate that, uh, that picture today because I totally forgot how I did that because I was just playing around with, uh, uh, with, I think it was Nick Silver effects. And I couldn't remember at some point it just popped up like that. And I was like, that looks interesting because actually this is nine o'clock in the morning 
and the sun is just coming up. So it's a blue sky. Uh, it's a little bit of fog there, but it's it's not night at all. And just with uh, with trying around, trying around, I found it to look so interesting because the light on the uh, on the field there on the left is actually the sun coming up on the right, and uh, it looks it's real weird. It would never look like that in, in in real life. You would have to light it quite complicatedly. But uh, yeah, it, it, it was interesting, and I just hope I never lose the file. When the sun is coming up, that again is is really close to my house. It's again just something that that looks nice and that doesn't need a story or any any explanations or something. That was in 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 Belgium, and I hope it 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 uh, you know that feeling when it. This is pristine snow. There's nobody was walking there. We were there early enough, and it's it's you you get this feeling in a, in a forest like that at that time of day. It's it's very quiet, and the only thing you hear sometimes is when when uh, snow is sliding off a branch and falling down uh, to the ground. That's all you would hear, and it, it's like a feeling like in a cathedral, what uh, sound wise. And I thought would I I was. I had no idea whether I could get that across, but I hope looking at that, uh, you could feel something like that. Other than that, I totally love the uh, the rhythm of the trees. That this this whole geometry of repeating uh, vertical lines with the uh, the the graduations in the snow and the soft lines there. <laughs> me. And there's another uh, text for this too, and it. Has it, it's, it's a reference to Robert Frost, I guess. And miles to go, the wind is a hollow sound. The cold creeps up my back and whispers into my ears. The blanket is right there. Lie down, rest, whatever path there was is lost under the snow. Wherever I look, there's only trees. There might be a farmhouse just up ahead, but for all, all I know, there is not a living soul in this world. So Holger, when you put the words with yeah. these, do you do this in your head in German and translate to English, or do you do it in English? Or I'm just curious about. I that. actually, I actually do it in English. It's okay. it's I've I've been living uh, abroad, like in, in Spain and Thailand and whatever, uh, okay. for so long that it came to the point that I think in English most of the time. Interesting. It's, it, I have to translate everything to German, <laughs> which is, it's weird, but yeah, well, what can you do? And this is uh, this again. It's, it's the same forest. It's just it's just the, the this 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 small uh, tree there, breaking the pattern of the of the the bigger trees. Although this is too much of a technical explanation, it it just made me take a picture. That's that's all I think I need to know for for the time being. Then that's island, and that's again. I, I look when I look through the pictures in, in Lightroom. Um, and I looked at the at the at the values of uh, the the f stops and that it's it's so embarrassing because this is the first year I had my first DSLR and I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. So uh, the, the image quality is is absolutely an issue. I know that, but it's still I, I like that picture because it's uh, it's an island and the 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 bigger grave here in the front is the wife of this. What do you call it, landowner they had there in the the times of the uh, famine, and the the smaller grave be behind that is is a child, and that was really it 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 was this small grave is is too small a grave actually, but it was with the light on the on the tree and that I liked it, and even though I didn't really know what I was doing, again Greece, and I totally love these. Uh, these they look like of course they're handmade, but it, it looked like they're they're really sculpting this with uh, less less straight lines and less hard edges. I like the architecture there a lot. That's on one of the ferries. I had to take ferries in Greece, uh, hopping these islands all the time, and I had to go back to Piraeus, which is the 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 harbor for Athens more than once because sometimes it just got so complicated that I had to take a ferry and then I had to take a, a, a plane, like small plane, because they only have very small uh, airports on these islands. And this was on a, on a, on one of these ferries. 
and just the way they i was standing up there and saw the the way the the these uh these chairs and the and the table was set up and i kind of liked it and the shadows of course well fern what what can you say if you haven't done a firm black and white picture you you probably still have to do it because I, I really like this this there's a self simplicity thing that's something that uh that appears in in uh, like chaos the chaos theory. There's a kind of of maths uh, that's that's really. I always thought these people that that talk about self simplicity and these Mandelbrot uh, models and that they must be smoking pot while they are working at the university because so that's so messed up. Uh, it's it's kind of trying to deal with it. Like I said before, the geometry that we can't really understand what what nature is doing there and can really put that into formulas and stuff and and and, and all that that's the kind of math they are they're dealing with that uh, trying to to understand that and trying to put that into forms which i don't think they should because uh, it's nature that's um santorini probably everybody knows santorini from the the pictures of of the uh the white buildings and the the blue domes and the, that's all these pictures you get from Oya usually, which is like one of two main uh, towns in on Santorini. And I didn't want that, so I just kind of turned around and away from all these buildings and found this uh, this wall with the with the door in. And that is more like Santorini. It's again, it's uh, it's the same island. That that's the uh, caldera because Santorini is basically just a, a volcano. But it's not active anymore, and the the caldera is more or less uh, a circle, and uh, you can you can walk. Uh, there's, a, there's a hiking trail there, and you you see all these these classical buildings there. That's again very timeless if you exclude the the electric box there, but I still like it for the tones and uh, yeah. Well, I I've been there and I got my story of course, and this is actually the the one I like the most. And I can even remember that for some stupid reason, I shot that at f5.6, but it somehow worked. I don't know. It's, it's, I had a D3200, and the first thing I bought was a 35 millimeter 1.8G, a prime lens. And then I walked around with that thing all over Santorini. And this is one uh, that came out. And this actually, I think, my most favorite one. And it's called I Hated You. And I, I actually uh, uh, gave my mother for a birthday uh, a print of this. And somehow she didn't like it. It was not connected to her at the time. But well, what can you say? This is, um, again, something I had to, uh, just like this, uh, the, the, the picture before, because I was a guide, I was supposed to take this, uh, the people out on, on, on hiking tours or I had to take them to... Uh, to um, dinner at night and this was actually walking down to the restaurant to have dinner and so I have the camera with me but I have this group of 15 people with me also so whatever I see I take one shot maybe two and that's all I can do I can never work the scene I can do anything and so I kind of I think that that was quite helpful but it just changed the way I photograph I never do this thing with uh, that I set something up and then I wait for hours to do it to so the sun is right or whatever I take pictures and I, and I leave because that's the way I learned it and I it works somehow I guess it works that's the last ferry I took when I was done with the job in uh, in in Greece um, back to Piraeus and taking the uh, the plane back home this is uh, like I said this is any genre I take it, I like the the the, the these uh, these lamps so much, and that's the the ceiling of Gate Twenty Six on the Athens Airport. And then it's something that probably uh, Carl Corey made me do because he does these kind of things, and I call that one six sexy seven because of the is this a number seven and it's somewhere it says sexy on the thing, but it's. Uh, when I look at that, I, I think that it's it's strange that for one, on the, on the one hand, I, I do these things uh, on the beach and, and landscapes and that, and then that interests me too. I just, uh, and I, I think that's a, that's a good thing that, that you have, you should be open for anything, I guess, I just exercise these openness to, to, to see pictures because I think the pictures are everywhere. 
uh, even in, in in my neighborhood. I don't I don't always have to go to epic places. And it's sometimes it's bad because I think I will never make it to Yosemite or something. But hey, it's, it's I got things here too. And there's there's pictures enough, I guess. This was the one time I made it to Africa. It's in uh, Antananarivo, which they call Tana because the name is a pain to pronounce. And that's the, the capital of Madagascar. And these two kids, they are playing with a ball they made of, of uh, shopping bags. That's uh, plastic shopping bags again and again. They, I don't know how they did it, that that thing doesn't open up again, but they somehow made themselves a ball. And they, are, they were living in a, uh, in a well, what's it called? This, this huge dump things. Uh, and then a dumpster, yeah. They lived in a dumpster that's just right from, uh, I, I didn't have that in the picture, that's so right there. And the mother was up there trying to sell something. It's it's a really poor country, but the people are so, so friendly. Like it always seems to be in the, in the poor countries, I guess. And that's on the beach in, in France. And I it's, it's years, of, uh, years ago that I, I took that, and, but I still haven't understood that because it's obviously uh, a bike track but I don't know how it works that the sand is over it. I never understood that and I, I, I probably won't ever, but I call it uh, beneath Tannhauser Gate and I love it because I don't understand it. <laughs> and that's from our last trip to, um, to uh, Normandy. And it's, I, I could do with it. There's a couple of things like trees uh, and clouds sand on the beach and marum grass i think you can always get away with it you can always find something in there it always looks interesting uh depending on on light on on rain no rain wind it's, it's always interesting uh i used that one for a for a, a an article about uh, panic attacks because that's something that plays into what i do also that i've been dealing with anxiety and depression for like 30 years or something and it, it always it tells. I think some of the stuff is dark, but it's always also good to know. Uh, like I said, being aware of why am I doing things? Why do my stuff? Uh, does my stuff look like it does? And that's again uh, uh, Mallorca, and it's it's looking across the the two bays uh, in the north, and I just loved how it did all these different. Uh, uh, shapes of of of, of uh, clouds there and that the rain and the sun rays are in there and again it was <laughs> in my first year with a dslr and i didn't really know how i did that this is from this year actually and uh, uh like i said I, I bring together this here a geometry of these these they look kind of cut off the trees there on the bottom left and i do for some reason, do a lot of, of landscape uh, photography vertical in, in, in portrait mode, actually. And I'm totally, I had a 10, yeah, I think a 10 millimeter at some point when I when I was thinking, yeah, landscape needs to be very wide and that. And now I totally go a different route. And sometimes I go out with a 50 mil and uh, take it all in portrait mode. And this, I guess it still works. I like it this way a lot better, I guess. This one uh, is in, in, in the Netherlands and it's called The Picture on the Wall. I was just sitting there waiting for my wife to, to, to come back from some shopping and that. And I looked up and I just straight looked into this, this room and I was thinking what might be going on in this room. And I liked it that it went through the uh, uh, through this, this, this staircase and then up there into the, into the room. It's, it's kind of strange how we even though that was not even a zoom, but how we can like like get into people's places and then get into their lives with the camera. Like I said, I like the, the beach and looking at that because it doesn't have scale really. And this could be something that you photograph from a, from a helicopter or something, but it was actually just down in my feet. And this is from uh, yeah again from around here. It's 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 uh, I wouldn't call it a river. It's too small for that. Uh, over here, and I, I always liked uh, 
reflections and even more so as these give it this this painfully dreamy effect then i have don't have to do any other than the 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 black and white conversion there's nothing else to do here and this again is something that's that's probably my interpretation of this uh because of the 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 anxiety thing uh, this is called where my dream uh, where my tears go and it's it's again something from uh from the beach that you look down and see on the left is more the water running back to the sea and on the right it's uh it's what it leaves the beach with these these uh, textures and forms That was an again another uh, fog is so helpful uh, when you, fog always gives it a mood that I really really like and uh, like Steve Gosling that who we had I think four weeks ago uh, I really like that he was talking about mood a lot and I I think that's something I want in my pictures also this is uh, the Netherlands again and uh, with the reflection and the and the the clouds and, and the fog, I couldn't ask for more. It was so easy. And this is actually an, an iPhone shot that happens sometimes. I, Of course, for this one, I couldn't come back, but I had one in in Spain uh, that I took a picture of, of a tree on the uh, on the cliff with an iPhone. And I came back another day and I tried to do it with a uh, DSLR. But still, I, I spent like half an hour there, and still the the one iPhone shot from the other day was better than anything I did with the DSLR. So I I don't shy away from. I use an iPhone. I use uh, all the cameras like a D hundred, D two hundred is pretty much the favorite I have right now. D seven hundred. I don't have anything that's that's new really, including the computers. <laughs> That's again something uh, that's that's around here. That's called where uh, who we were, and it's that's 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 mood. That's for me asking myself like, who sat in on on that bench and uh, what were they thinking? Where are they now? That's the kind of things that I think about uh, when I see something like that. And it's it's very minimalistic. I like that. Oh yeah, that is. An example of something that that you can't feel because you weren't there, you wouldn't know the story. You would maybe think that's nice winter scene, but I call it cold heart because this is uh, close to a place that the Nazis built in from it's like a hundred k from here or something, and they uh, they had this thing there where they brought all the the uh, the youth like Hitler the Hitler Jugend and stuff to to uh, raise them and educate them to be uh, Nazi leaders in the future. And uh, at some point, the the Americans uh, overrun the place and then that was done for. But it's really, it's, it's that place is so creepy. And then this, uh, this, this force and all that, that I, I couldn't shake that feeling really. So I had to bring it into the picture. That again is in in that little uh, village in in southern France, and um, they, the way they our friends they have a house there, and the, the way they uh, they uh, did the interior was really really nice, and it was some something very you had to get used to some stuff because this is the uh, the lower bathroom, and the one side of this whole house was built into the in, into the mountain. And one side of this this bathroom is just rock, and when it rains, it rains. It's, it's the whole rainwater is running through the bathroom, which is kind of uh, something you wouldn't you wouldn't accept here. But there is quite romantic, and, and you laugh about it. That's just shadows. I uh, I totally like shadows, and especially if there's there's uh, this this structure and the the, the patterns. In the in the rocks also the uh, that's underneath it that makes it even more appealing to me, and that's something uh, is uh, when we uh, in the, in the city the next big city around here, I found that there. And that's the uh, this 14th century church. That's the uh, the the stairs leading up to it, and uh, I, I just pointed pointed it from from uh, from above. I pointed uh, shot straight down and so it just to give it the illusion of uh, maybe it's a wall and that is actually all i got <laughs> are we somewhere around 45 minutes 
Yeah, I, guess yeah, so. I think that was great timing. <laughs> really <laughs> nice work. Thank you. Yeah, I think Jim had some questions for you. I don't know if you want to okay. turn on your mic, Jim. You want to ask some of them? Okay. Um I mean, Hope and I have been chatting about photographs for a while. And so these are all sort of thoughts on what um, what Holger does and sort of how I continue to think about what what, what Holger does. Um, one of the things I'm now moved to wonder is that our photos are as much a reaction to what's outside, but also a reaction to what we're thinking about photography and the conversations that we have about photography. Yeah. And... I know you through your conversations with other English speaking photographers. And I wondered, are, do you have conversations with German photographers and do you feel that your photographs, <laughs> uh, do, do your photographs speak German or do they speak English? <laughs> That's a good question. I like that. <laughs> um, uh, actually, I don't talk to to really to any any German photographers because I think I was always uh, uh, I always liked American photo photographers more than uh, well apart from maybe Stieglitz because he's he's basically German. But uh, no, but there was nothing German that interested me, and but that's I think that's a whole culture thing. I, I like uh, American movies more. I like American books more. You know, it's it's not just the the the, for the it's the whole culture thing is something that always uh, attracted me. So, yeah, it's it's weird. And of course, they they speak any kind of language. There there was something about language uh, because that's not something that, of course, people also uh, say when it comes to photography. They it's easy to label that as as a, 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 a as another language like music. It's the same thing that people say. Oh, it's it's like learning a language. But I thought, like, when it comes to this this language thing, here's another uh, uh, thought that that I like to entertain is that you know that feeling when you when you repeat uh, repeat a word again and again until until it loses, it loses all meaning, and you just hear it as as a sound. It's not really a, you don't even recognize the word anymore. And if you do that, and you get this feeling that you hear something, because I can't imagine that anymore. If I hear something in my own language for the first time, that a word. Of course, that's that moment is gone for me. But if I could make photography feel like that again for me, that is because this it's it's a Buddhist thing. It's it's like when you think about uh, this this uh, this approach of a beginner that you should hope to to keep and to to culture and, and not let go uh, to be like a child again when it comes to 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 doing things. That would be cool, and then so that's uh, in a, in a way uh, that's another thought that I, that I like uh, to do it like that, and to 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 get back to photography and and not uh, always falling back on 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 principles and and uh, ways to do things that you have done before. Yeah, you, ha you have to reinvent yourself the whole time. I guess that sort of goes back to another thing that Jim had asked in the question section there. Yeah. Um, with your photographic vision, are you attempted to re-edit and revisit past work and locations, or are you more interested in future explorations? Both. I mean, it's it's. I look at definitely look at. Uh, uh, I go through the 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 Lightroom catalog or wherever I do it uh, from time to time, and and then of course I look at things, and it's not only maybe you've you've learned some techniques in the in the software that you you didn't know about before, and now you can do it different, but also is when I look at the the uh, the Ansel Adams quote that I, that I mentioned earlier about this, what you bring to the to the process of, uh, of photography, like what you've experienced and all that, that changes every day. You you learn more, you you develop as a person, and of course, then uh, I might look at some of my work differently now than I did uh, twenty years ago, and I, I I do that quite often that I that I go back to these pictures and re-edit them and and maybe even find some different meaning in it. Joe, you've got your hand up. What's going on? <laughs> well, I think that's very interesting. Uh, the whole thing about language is a very interesting uh, concept to me. I mean, um, yeah. I I don't know that I photograph in English. That's, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I, I, I stopped the other day. I, I saw, I was driving around, I saw a, uh, 
a tree casting a shadow on a on a fence, right? Uh, and so I pulled my car over, I got out, grabbed my camera, and uh, I'm making pictures of this tree and it's it's shadow. Uh, if I show you that that image without a caption and without my name on it, mm. uh, that that tree could be. I mean, it's right around the corner from my house, right? And of course, I'm I'm here in Chicago land. So, unless you know that, if you don't know it's my picture, and you don't know that I speak, that tree could be anywhere, right? Yeah. Uh, so, and it's like your your pictures of, of of the beach. You know, the tire track with the sand. Yeah. It's gone that somehow washed over it. That's a very interesting picture. And we don't know where that beach is. That beach could be in Normandy. That beach could be in California. That beach could be on a Greek island. It could be in in in, in Thailand. I mean, it could be anywhere. Yeah. In that regard, I think that, that photography is kind of universal. Uh I think captions don't really matter. Uh everybody will inject what they thinking into that picture. Absolutely. You know what I mean? They, they come yeah. to their own, they come to their own meeting, regardless of what you intended, Holger, or, or no, that, that's, what I'm thinking about. It's, uh, the thing is, I, I don't think, and I hope, I don't in, uh, intend anything. It's like, like I said, when I write something about it, like be it the title or these, these two or three sentences, it's always like, that's what I felt. That's that's my reaction to this, and that's what I because I like that that you can amplify uh, uh, the picture by writing something about uh, about it, and I tried that with music too that you can add some music to it like anything you have in your arsenal of of of, of uh, talents use it to 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 bring this all together. We don't have to stop at being photographers. You can do a lot more. Yeah. But I totally like when you say when it uh, comes to that it could be anywhere because that inspires you to think uh hey isn't it really aren't we all the same this is like it's about being yeah. a human being on this planet not about a stupid uh i think at least for me it's stupid i don't want to insult anybody but i think it's a stupid concept of of religions of nations and all that that doesn't matter that always only leads to trouble and i, I totally love that when, when you said it could be anywhere <laughs> I had this this memory of my first time coming to New York, and it was in 1998. And I was sitting in a in a in a, in a friend's apartment on the lower lower east side. And he had the it was uh, summer, and he had the windows open. And I was thinking, see, songs you hear from outside and the and the the the, the warm air you feel in the it feels the same as home. And at that moment, you hear or heard of a police siren, and I thought, like, yeah, well, that's a difference. <laughs> but but yeah, that was the that's only a very thing. New York experience. <laughs> yeah, and, but and for just, the rest, uh, it was really it's, it's it's all the same, really. Yeah. Yeah, and just so you guys know, especially uh, Jeff, yeah, my chair squeaks in English. <laughs> <laughs> um, Holger, one of the things I was going to say is that. Uh, I really kind of admire your openness and um, how you kind of uh, open your heart in both your photography and your words. Um, yeah. Is that something that, well, first of all, is that something your therapist has gotten you to do? <laughs> uh, or is it actually therapy for you to do that? Um. Well, he he didn't no, he didn't encourage it, but we 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 talk. I mean, it's something. If you go see a, the, a therapist because you have a problem like that, a mental health problem, then of course one of the the prerequisites, the one something that's totally necessary, is that you are open, that you talk about what you, your problem is. Otherwise, you you can just forget about it, really. <clears throat> and the the other thing is that uh, I think it's 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 not something. And that's a lot of people in, who have mental health issues have that problem that they don't want to uh, admit that they have a problem in, in that uh, area. But I always thought like that's not something uh, you can hold against me. It's not my fault. It's 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 I'm. Sometimes it's a it's a, it's something I don't want to miss because it's it made me. I look at me right now and thinking that's not that bad really, because I can do stuff that is nice and people react to it and it's I can. I can talk about things that other people don't talk about, I guess, or not so many people talk about. 
and and I like that. So it's 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 not really that I think, oh my God, I have this and I have had this for so long and I'm not in despair because it's not going away. I just have to find a way to deal with that. And, and I, there was an interesting uh, podcast with Tim Ferriss, I think was it? And because he had a guest, a woman that said uh, she would hate it, uh, that that a lot of artists would think um, I'm only an artist if if I suffer. And if, if I would get over that suffering, whatever it comes from, it would be it mental health or other health issues or being alone or I don't know, uh, then they would lose some of their their uh, creative powers or whatever you want to call it. And that was kind of so stupid. I thought it's it's I wouldn't hate that. It's it's there. It's part of me. It made me who I am. It made my work what it is. So I don't really hate it. Well, at the risk of offending you, I would say that you are definitely an artist. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you may not like oh. it, but <laughs> that's that's it's just the word because I think art and artist. First of all, I don't like the word because it's it's like what is what, where does it come from? I if I call myself a, a, a picture maker, which some people do, I can understand that that. That for my stupid little head, that I can wrap my head around a, a picture maker, what he does. But artist doesn't doesn't tell me anything, doesn't give me a hint. I don't even know what that word means. So I think that I like that when uh, my friend Tony Lovejoy said, "You're a natural poet," and I was like, "Well, wait a second, I, I got to look up poet." And poet not only somebody who writes poetry, but who is good in expressing things. And I thought I I can live with that. I can live with natural poet. That, that that's, that's okay. Of so course, people. You're a photo poet. <laughs> yeah if you if you want to like but it's not i'm not only taking photos i'm I'm writing and playing music so i guess there's more to it it's for for all of us is i hate it when it, wouldn't you think if you if, if somebody asks you uh, tell me in three words or less who you are you would think no you take half an hour and look at my website or talk to me or something it's i don't i don't want that one word to describe me that's not good enough that uh, i could never do that well we'll be sure to put your uh, the URL to your website because you do Thank kind you. of a, a continuing blog where you post photos and some of your thoughts. Could you put that in yeah. the chat? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, that way I'll make sure that I get it because I'm going to save the chat. Um, and then uh, uh, Jim also once again uh, complimented you on how you have grown and changed. Uh, oh, yeah, has, thank you. has it impacted your thoughts on music as well? And are you still into uh, Springsteen? <laughs> I was always. In. Springsteen is, is very interesting because he has, uh, it's not only the music, but it had something here. Yeah, I had a note here. Uh, he was on VH Storytellers at some point, uh, I think 10 years ago or something. And he, uh, that's that was a show when he played music and then he talked about the songs uh, and how that happened. And then he said something about Devils and Dust, the meaning of the song, the lyrics and music. And at the end, he said, how much of this was I thinking when I wrote the song? None of it. I wrote all of this yesterday afternoon at my kitchen table. And how much of what uh, of that was I feeling when I wrote the song? All of it. And I think that's the same approach that not not only me but the same approach you can have with photography because of, uh, when you do it it's it's more like a it's you you again forget about it you forget about all the stuff you've learned you just do it but of course before you think a lot about uh which photos do i like what what do i, do I not, not like what of my my stuff is worth uh, going more over because it's not really where i want it to be uh yeah and music is <clears throat> Music, the same as writing and photography, is, is always something that, that I think is all connected. Your experience as a human being is connected as, to your experience as a photographer, writer, or musician. So it's it's all, can, you can always learn from the other stuff. So even if I'm, I'm, I'm writing or I'm taking photographs, then I also uh, benefit from what I do and think there in my playing music. So it's, I, I like that thing that, that you even 
uh, even without a camera, you run around and it, it, I guess that's all, all of you do that. You, maybe you sit in the subway, you're in a commute or something, and you look around and you see things and you, you, you think about it, you realize stuff that you can use the next time you have a camera or you just grab your iPhone. Well, yeah, but that's iPhone. the thing. <laughs> you got to have the damn camera. <laughs> Jay Mazel, yeah, Jay Mazel says it's a lot easier to be a photographer if you actually <laughs> carry a camera. Um, and just having been, I just visited Jay at his new place in Brooklyn, and and uh, Jay has been a big influence to me as well. Uh, but mm -hmm. yeah, just carrying a camera, if you see something, shoot it. Um, and uh, one of the problems I have now is that I'm bumping up on to uh, almost a terabyte of uh, 40,000 <laughs> images on my iPhone. And I, uh, Kevin keeps saying, well, put it up into the cloud. And I look at how much the Apple cloud charges. And it's like, yeah, you know, I'm just going to um, uh, maybe delete the stuff and start from scratch. I've got copies of it, of course, on the computer. <laughs> um, but the, the thing also, I, I noticed um, in your current uh, uh, post, let us now praise famous men. And, yeah. and you mentioned uh, Stieglitz, uh, Stieglitz and Steichen, and then uh, a, a, on the East Coast, and then on the West Coast, Edward Weston and Ansel Adams. Um, it's interesting because the East Coast highly pictorialistic, and the West Coast is highly super realistic. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of uh, a knee-jerk reaction against pictorialism, you kind of fall into the realism, but with, a with a, I think, an interesting aesthetic. So uh, congratulations on both your composition, because that's one thing that a lot of photographers kind of fail to uh, examine, as it were. Yeah. Um, I mean you have the ability to compose when you shoot, but then you also have the ability to compose or refine the composition once you crop. Uh, and it's funny, when I was in uh, Antarctica with uh, Seth Resnick, uh, he, you know, a shooter, he, he shoots and he, he frames in camera. And he never, and this is funny, funnier than hell, he had never actually used the Lightroom crop function. I said, you don't crop? He said, no, I don't crop. I crop in camera. And I said, well, just start playing with it. And he started playing with it. All of a sudden, everything that he shot, he ended up cropping. And it was a revelation to him that he had two opportunities to compose, once when you shoot and once when you crop. Uh, and that changed his uh, his vision, as it were. So I like your cropping and composition. Uh, also, your post processing doesn't suck at all. Oh, thank you. And it's it's um, I re I really think with the, the this 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 choice of, of of cameras that that I made at some point that I got rid of of something with I think twenty four megapixels or something. Now everything I have is ten megapixels, so maybe. Yeah, I think 12 is the highest. So I have to get it mostly in camera because I don't have that much to crop really if I want to have a decent print later on. Well, uh, that was the other thing I was going to ask. There's not a lot of uh, uh, questions in the chat. So I was just going to ask, um, are you a printer as it were? Because yeah. an awful lot of photographers these days shoot, they post, but then they don't print. I don't, it's, it's, no, I, I couldn't, I couldn't think if, if I really like it, I, I, I made it uh, something, it's something like every weekend I, I, I print one. And I, I always think that it's, it, it has to go full circle. It has to be something that I can hold. And I only print in A4 and 13 by 19, because I think this A4 format is something that you, you can hold in your hand and appreciate a lot more. And I like it better to look at that without a frame so you can look at the the texture and the the surface of the of the paper really and hold it in your hand i like that a lot better than than having it on the wall and that means i don't have to print that big which helps with the 10 and 12 megapixels a4 is eight and a half by 11. yes it's half of the 30 by 19 yeah more or less okay 
I get confused because I, I'm a photographer and and I, <laughs> I, I, I go on photo uh, four by five, eight by ten, eleven by fourteen, sixteen, twenty. Um, yeah, the weird thing is that Canson uh, uh, doesn't market it, mark it like thirteen by nineteen, but it doesn't do the same film I think for the A four, and we got A four, A three, and stuff like that. Yeah. What size prints do you prefer? Jim is asking. Oh, uh, like like I said, I think the the small of the A four that is something to hold in your hand, and yeah. I really like the the, the format uh, to appreciate something. Not not only my own stuff, but it's it's like the perfect setting of putting music on, having a glass of red wine, and then sitting there and, and looking at pictures in in that size. And it's, what it's, about the paper texture? Are you into a a fine, you know, glossy or a smooth texture or a heavy or fine art texture? I started with Canson uh, uh, Barida Photographic. Mm -hmm. And later on, I tried the, what's it called? Uh, some, some rag. I can't remember right now. But it's, it's I think the, these, they, they brought out a second Barida which isn't really that far from the first, but I like that that uh, that classic look because it's with the with the uh, uh, with the development and stuff. The editing is is always kind of I want it to be old school. I want it to be classical, really, and that's why I like the proper writer paper pretty much. Oh, it's getting dark here. <laughs> Does okay. anyone else have some questions? Doesn't seem that way, no. Oh, thanks to Tim. It was a nice comment. Thanks. I, I've got a question as I'm thinking about it. We talked okay. about, Jeff says, do you print? And uh, I'm sure that he's asking you, do you like you know, spit something out of a digital printer? I mean, I print just about everything that I like. Yeah. I print. I like to hold something in my hand and look at it just like you do. My question is, have you worked in a traditional darkroom? Just yeah. curious. No, no, it was the interesting part was I uh, used to share an ap uh, apartment like 25 years ago with a friend of mine who, who was who was photo for, for uh, shooting film at that point. And he had a makeshift uh, darkroom in, in, in the bathroom. And I heard him there clunk clunk do the thing and everything. But for some reason, Although I like the images he did, totally, I still do. But I never, I never even went in with him and to look at what he was doing. It was totally, it didn't, didn't affect me at all. And it had to go digital. And now that I'm, like I said, I got this Zeiss icon. I forgot the name of the model. It's, it's like a, I think five inch, uh, folding camera from 1930 it's or something the icon trona trona yeah yeah that's that's right and and i i know i i think it's interesting to me because it's it slows you down it makes you think more about what what am i going to shoot and not it's not like i i spray and pray a lot but it's uh with with film it's it's totally different and i just want to have that experience for once or maybe longer if i like it but i would only go as far as to Develop it and then scan the uh, the negatives because uh, I have the scanner and everything. I wouldn't I wouldn't do the darkroom thing. That's too much to ask for, really. So are you going <laughs> to process the film yourself, or are you going to uh, send it out? No, because uh, I have a friend who who's uh, who knows everything I need to know about this, and we already tried that with uh, these. I don't know, you know the names of these things yet, but you you put the chemicals into like a plastic container and then you shake it for a while and then yeah, developing so, so we, yeah we we did that and i said that that's something i can see myself doing that's that's about all the effort i want to uh, get into that and not the the rest then no not really I, I wouldn't even have the space for it anyway that's another question well, well you know the, the the old school thing was uh if you made pictures and you developed and printed your own pictures you learned a lot about exposure yeah uh and it was especially true especially critical in, in the good old days which i you know probably too old uh well when i used to shoot kodachrome kodachrome was a very little latitude you, you had uh, you had to really know how to expose a piece of film 
<laughs> and these days, I go back through, you know, I shoot a lot, I've been shooting digital since, I don't know, uh, 2005, 2006. I go back through my Lightroom catalog and I'll look at things and say, that picture sucks. But then I'll open it up and I'll edit in Photoshop. And in Photoshop or even in Lightroom, there are certain adjustments you can make, which bring a picture that you think is, you know, marginal, uh, bring it alive and it looks great. Uh, you can open highlights, you can decrease, you can open shadows, you can decrease highlights, you can uh, change saturation and, and all kinds of things. Uh, it's kind of interesting. I, I feel like you don't really need to know that, that old school stuff anymore. Uh, I, I'm sure it helps, mm -hmm. but there's a whole generation of photographers yeah. who never had that experience and they do really, really nice work. Uh, it's It's maybe... Because I was thinking, like, everybody has, and I do too, uh, the three Ansel Adams book uh, books about the negative and the the the, the print and the, the camera. Yeah. And uh, at some point I was thinking, why should I even read that? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm, maybe now that I have this this film camera, but the... Uh, again, you better read some... it now that you have a film camera. Yeah, yeah, def hey. now definitely. But before, before I was even considering the film camera, I was thinking, why should I read it? But uh, a lot of digital photo uh, photographers still read them because it's about the uh, the way he thinks, the way he talks. Yeah. Uh, that's still interesting. Well, there, they, you know, they, there you know it's book. a good book to read. I hate to. Can I plug somebody's book? Is that all right? Oh yeah. This is a really good book. I, I got my, it. I'm on like my third rereading of this book. <laughs> uh, I still haven't got it all. One of these days. <laughs> but uh, actually, I think I like that better. <laughs> yeah, that's next. I got to first understand this one to get to that one. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's the hard. Hogan, the camera we're talking about. Do you have it there with you now? Wait a second. <laughs> it's this here. Yeah. So is that that takes sheet film, right? Or is that a roll? If only. That takes sheet film or a roll? Uh, she, she, no sheet. Yeah, you have to. I have, I think, fifteen of these, these what you call it frames or something, that you put the sheet. Uh, film into. holder. Film holder. Yeah. 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 It's, it's funny. <laughs> Joe and I are trying to teach Holger how to use film camera. <laughs> got one of these. Yeah. Film holder. Oh, lots of these. <laughs> yeah, I've got a bunch of those. You should sell them, Joe. They go for a really high amount now. No, 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 no. I I uh, acquired a uh, speed graphic 4x5 camera, and I'm working up to uh, to using it. So I'm going to hold on to my sheet film holders because uh, I'd, I'd really like to get, get, get into that. How are you going to process? Get, what's that? How are you going to process? I could I could set up trays in my bathroom, you know. I mean, I could process film in a tray, right? Yeah, yeah. there's my little toy, but it's. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not going to go into the big tank dip and duck stuff, Jeff. That's too. That's, so that's that's, I got rid of all that stuff a long time ago. I'm not going to do it again. Well, it's it's funny. Uh, some of you may know Dave Palermo, used to be at Apple, and now is mm -hmm. in. Uh, um, uh, where the hell is he? Santa Monica or something? Shooting architectural photography for uh, retail. But he was into Robert Adams and he was just convinced that he would never be able to achieve the same kind of tonality digitally that you could get on a four by five uh, sheet of film and making a traditional black and white print. So he went out and bought a camera, a couple of lenses, dip and dunk bunch of film holders went out and shot a bunch of stuff. Uh, one of the shortcomings, of course, uh, in shooting film and using it digitally is that uh, the scanning is uh, you get good scans or you get bad scans. And Holger, I don't know how you're going to scan the film. Uh, I've got an Epson 750, which allows me to get decent scans off of uh, well, eight and a half by 11 down, uh, like eight by 10. But uh, I've got my old Imicon 848 
with an old G4 that can drive it. And when I need 35 or four by five or two and a quarter film scans, I use that scanner because it's as close to a drum scan as you can get. Uh, and, and so that is one of the problems you're gonna face when you're dealing with the film is exposure, latitude, contrast control over processing, because you can soften the contrast or increase the contrast while you process, hence you know the zone system. Uh, and then once you get it into digital, what the hell are you gonna do with it? Um, pretty <laughs> much everything that is wrong with an image can be resolved in Photoshop, if not Lightroom. Yeah, you know, good old days, I remember I scared the crap out of my father once. Uh, he came to my studio and he wanted to see my dark room. So I showed him around the dark room and I had a uh, a bottle of uh, potassium ferrocyanide. Right? Uh, and I had some other little things I used to do. Uh, I used to keep a small, short developing tank, like one roll or two roll tank, and have some Dectol in it that I kept heated on a hot plate. And I would use, uh, I'd, I'd put a print in a tray and I had this plexiglass sheet uh, above the tray and I'd pull the print out, put it on the, on the, on the plexi, take a Q-tip with the hot deck tool and I'd swab it and, you know, do stuff like that and little developing tricks. And then if you wanted to bleach something, you had uh, a, little, uh, a little glass of ferrous I'd mix it in water and I'd do the same thing uh, with either a brush or a, uh, or a Q-tip. And my father saw the, the bottle with the skull and the crossbones on it. And he said to me, well, you know, you got to be real careful with this. Don't reach for the wrong drink in the dark. You know, yeah. uh, <laughs> but, uh, that's awful. <laughs> but, but you got all those things, all those tools in Lightroom now and Photoshop. You can do all that stuff without stinky chemistry, without turning your fingers yeah. brown. You know, uh, it's all there. Just at the, just the, the funny thing, around. of course, is now the Gen Z, Kevin and when we took our little trip to Robert's camera here in uh, Indianapolis, um, th they started a used camera division within Robert's camera and it's grown huge. They solicit and take in, they will, uh, you send them a description, they'll give you a quote, you send them the uh, equipment and then they cut you a check. And what ends up happening is that uh, like a 500 CM Hasselblad is selling for almost the price that it was new. Yeah. Uh, roll film Hasselblad's backs, not making any more 500 no, CM. No, And roll film backs are, are very valuable. So Gen Z and, and Holga, you're a little bit younger than like Joe and I. Um, you're on the cusp. <laughs> Between say we're old. Gen X and Gen <laughs> Z. Well, we're boomers, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. You know what really sucks, though, is uh, some of my stuff that nobody makes. I still have, I don't know, a few hundred thousand uh, slides to scan. Uh, hundred thousand? I, I think a few hundred thousand. Uh, I got filing cabinets over here. I mean, you've got the same shit in your place. Uh, and what I like to do is remount the slides in in these uh in these gepi mounts right uh these these are glass mounts i just pulled the glass out uh when you open it up it's got this little thing you can slide the film in it holds the film really flat and uh and i ran out of these recently and they don't make this stuff anymore there's no demand so now i'm forced to go online to ebay to buy my favorite slide mount so I can keep scanning my stuff. Uh, and it's way more expensive now than it used to be when they were, when they were new. I mean, it's well, just, just scan your film high res and then throw it away. Look at the look. <laughs> 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 throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> Did he go what, offline? What over there? He, froze. he just had a heart attack. <laughs> Well, Michelle Trevkov just posted that he's been throwing everything, all his stuff away. Yeah. You know, well, when I moved, when I sold the studio, I moved. I had to go from a film room to a film closet. And yeah, that yeah. Made me go through and and uh, I mean, I I kept everything. So you know, I was on uh, 
I used to do Budweiser shoots where I would do uh, beer pours and shoot mm-hmm. eight by 10. So, you know, yeah. 100 or 150 sheets of eight by 10 for a single shoot. And then maybe three or four would get um, uh, used. And then, but I kept the rest until I decided to throw them all away. Um, Holger, it's, it, uh, it'll be interesting to see what kind of impact um, analog will have over your digital vision. Yeah. Because it, uh, just knowing, you know, I'm graduated from RIT and, and uh, um, uh, Leslie Strobel was my uh, summer, tra- he wrote view camera technique, mm-hmm. you know, and when I was at RIT, uh, Minor White was still a uh, uh, instructor emeritus and we used to see him walk in the halls. It was almost like a ghost. Um, <laughs> But because uh, he never said anything, uh, but the whole analog world, um, uh, you can pick up an awful lot regarding your vision um, if you acquire some analog skills. So congratulations yeah. on doing that. Thank you. That's what I thought. Yeah. And then the other yeah, thing. It'll, it'll love your game for sure. Yeah. The other thing you were saying, and I mentioned it in the chat. Uh, looking down, um, uh, I, w- I took this workshop out in Monterey, and one of the instructors one day was uh, Bill Neal, and and we went to Weston Beach, you know, at Point Lobos, and the whole thing was looking down at sand and rocks, and and I got some wonderful shots, and you know, I know how to I know how to look. But looking down is something that I didn't do an awful lot of. Um, I usually look down to see where my feet are so I don't trip. <laughs> but not looking with it uh, from a visual standpoint. So I congratulations. Kind of, I like some of the, the, and it really is an abstraction of shapes and texture and, mm. and tone, not color. Uh, that was one question I was going to ask. Is, so you don't know how to do color. Is that right? <laughs> Thank you. No, I, I don't think so. I think that that uh, I, I wouldn't start uh, an image and then thinking, well, let's go. It's going to be black and white anyway, so fuck the color, forget it. That's not how to treat color, I guess. I think you have to get at least a decent color image and then do the conversion. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just don't. I, I, I never even. Uh, I, I don't limit myself in genres. But in the in the color and black and white thing, I, I for some stupid reason I do. I never do color. Yeah. What do you think, John? I think we've covered things pretty well here. Yeah. Well, I wanted to really thank Holga for uh, thank um, you. Uh, have hanging out there. so late at night. I mean, well, it's what nine o'clock. No, it's it's nine thirty now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not that late at night. I, I can stay up a little more. Yeah. <laughs> you're not so old like us. You what? So you're, you're not, not old, old like us. us. Jeff and I are in bed by 10.30. <laughs> 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 um, Whenever um, the nurse um, comes. <laughs> actually, Jeff's a night owl. Oh, yeah. He stays up late. I wake up early. I don't. From all those, all those years of being out there at sunrise. Yeah. Um, I, I much prefer sleep. sunset. Yeah, well, everybody's got their thing, you know. Yeah, I'd rather walk home in the dark than walk to the location in the dark. Yeah, I don't know if it's the Parkinson's or the meds I've taken, but I've I used to be able to sleep until noon. Now I wake up at four a.m. every day. Yeah, and when I was when I was seventeen, I could sleep till noon. That was no problem. Yeah, I was able to do that till <laughs> those days are long gone. <clears throat> Well, oh I'll God. be seeing uh, Karen on Saturday, John, so I'll make sure to oh, say hello. And uh, uh, yeah, I, it's interesting because the uh, a lot of Americans don't travel to Europe and it's funny. It's fun to see Europeans that travel to America and the <laughs> impact that it has. Uh, Holger, uh, you're getting a little Americanized. I'm worried about you. Oh, I shouldn't. I, I've never seen America. I only, I only went to New York twice. And I don't think that's part of America. It really isn't. 
Well, that's part of America. I, I invite you to Texas. I invite you to come to Texas. <laughs> okay, that should be interesting. Yeah, he's <laughs> from Chicago too. Chicago's America. Uh, well, but for example, Texas is not just Texas. I mean, there's a lot of different parts to Texas. I've got a friend from um, Oh yes, West Texas, and he says West Texas is not East Texas. Oh, there's nothing area? the same about it. Well, what, what gets even crazier if you go to Austin, Texas, it, it is I-35 that runs through it. On the east side of 35, it's absolutely flat for hundreds of miles. And if you go on the west side, it's all hill country. And it's, it's like somebody took a knife and just cut between them and pasted them together. Yeah, but Texas is unique. You know, I had a, I had a friend when I was in college who uh, was from Waco. And he used to say that you could drive from uh, from Houston to Los Angeles. And when you get to El Paso, you're halfway there. I think you're more than halfway there. <laughs> Probably. But that's how wide that place is. I like the hill country, in case anybody cares. <laughs> oh, the hill country is beautiful. Yeah. But that, that's something really why I would want to go beyond New York at some point. This is we, we don't have the sense of space, not, not in, 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 in the way you have it. That's something I, I can't even remember. Uh, I can't even imagine with these, uh, whatever I see in the movies with, with uh, roads going straight for, for miles and miles and miles. We don't have, just don't have that. I mean, we have other things that are interesting, and but it's, it's yeah, it's so different. Well, then you want to get on the highway in Fort Worth and drive to uh, El Paso. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like 600 miles of nothing. Oh, yeah, as yeah. A, as well, as how do you stay office. awake? How do you stay awake on the wheel then? Loud music. Loud music. <laughs> <that's there. laughs> the, the first time I drove across Texas, I was driving a 240Z, and I, I got to, I came over the hill on one of these roads that when I say came over the hill, the hill was maybe 10 feet high, and I'm looking <laughs> out and I have no idea what the distance is, but I know it's far and it was completely straight, and I was wondering how good is the alignment on my car. So I took my hands <laughs> off the wheel and I drove for 17 miles without driving, without touching the wheel. Yeah, there's, there's places like that in Nevada. I, I left, uh, I went to drove across Nevada on Route 50 and uh, mm. I left this little town called Eli where it had a, one of those gas stations that last gas 300 miles. Mm -hmm. Filled up and, uh, and in fact, uh, at that gas station, I had a little convenience store and, and uh, I needed some cold drinks and, and I was traveling with a friend of mine and uh, he gassed up the car and I went in and I bought uh, a six pack of, uh, it said, said Jack Daniels Cola. And, and I guess I didn't read it too well because it wasn't Jack, Jack Daniels doesn't make a cola. It was Jack Daniels and cola. Mm -hmm. And we go out on this road and route 50 is just straight as an arrow for three, literally for 300 miles. And we're drinking we're down in these cans of Jack Daniels Cola, and all of a sudden we're starting to feel a little, uh, a little tipsy because we get actually on our way to getting quite drunk. Uh, but you're right. Hands off the wheel. The lineman's good. You can go 300 miles without ever touching the wheel. And it doesn't matter if you fall asleep if your alignment's good. <laughs> you can fall asleep for an hour and wake up 60 miles down the road. <laughs> Here's, uh, it, you know? I got a shot that I did from my... Uh... Um, motorcycle hands off. Yeah, I saw uh, that picture. Yeah, at a, about 110 miles an hour, uh, <laughs> no hands on on Route 50. And uh, um, the only thing that was weird was I uh, on my motorcycle on Route 50 coming in close to Tahoe. There's a military base there, and I swear to God, I got I got a close pass by an F6. Yes. And I swear to God, he did it on purpose because he came up behind me really <laughs> fucking fast and really fucking low. And I got, I felt jet wash. Um, yeah, when, he was going a little faster than 110, I think, Jeff. Yeah, well, yeah. But <laughs> that, that pilot might have thought you were a pilot because a lot of jet pilots like motorcycles. Yeah. So if you're booming along on a motorcycle near an Air Force base, they probably thought you were one of them. I'm like, hey, yeah. I don't know who that is, but let's. Yeah, well, scared the shit out of me. It's one of those tight sphincter <laughs> moments. Um, fortunately, when you go 80 or 90 miles an hour, you don't have to worry too much about um, 
uh, uh, steering shake. Uh, but, um, oh, John's got his test screen on. I wonder if that means John is done. Um, I, no, I, I did. Just, uh, my camera turned itself off. Oh. Um, <laughs> One more thing. I was going to say we're at, at uh, about an hour and, and uh, 40 minutes. Um, I, I, you know, uh, what I wanted to do is to go ahead and, and uh, uh, we've been circling, but I, I want to go ahead and land this plane, if that's all right. Uh, okay. I'd like to thank our guest, Holger Mitski, um, thank you. from Germany, uh, uh, and uh, with uh, his uh, uh, greatly improved English. Uh, I think uh, hang around with us improves your English and maybe make you a little bit more American. Uh, thank John Cornicello for uh, starting this uh, photo chat thing. And, sure. and thank, uh, thank uh, Kevin Raber and Photo Pixel. He says PXL, I say Pixel. I think we ought to all kind of tell him to call it Photo Pixel. Um, and uh, I, I am going to stop the recording unless there's some reason that anybody else okay i'm gonna stop <laughs>